All right, hey everyone. Well, let me start with my usual Monday intro. Hello, traders. Mark P. Markets here. My name is Mark Principato. I'm a chartered market technician, and I am simulcasting today on TradingView. That's why I do things a little bit differently on Monday. So here's what I'm going to do. Hey, everyone. Nice to see everyone. CC and Shayshank. So what I'm doing is this. Since I'm on TradingView and I have to follow the house rules, I'm going to talk about Bitcoin uh, as part of my analysis. I'm going to stay on that for about maybe about five minutes. I'm going to talk about the bonds real quick, okay, because we need to look at that. And then I'm going to spend the rest of the time answering your questions, okay? So if you have... Uh, if you have you know, a market or a stock you'd like to see, please share it in the chat now. And if it's a coin, please put USD or USDT after it so I'm not on the wrong symbol for three hours. All right, so let's get started. This is for educational purposes only. For investment advice, please consult a licensed investment advisor. All right, let's go. Actually, I'm going to put a chart up here of Bitcoin. Hold on, let me get the chart up. And uh, there we go. And I'm in it too. All right, so today is Monday. What I like to go over on Monday is the economic calendar. We can't forget about that. I'm going to spend one minute on it, okay? I'm not going to show the calendar because, you know, TradingView may not like it because it's not their calendar. So you could use their calendar, but I like to use this one. It gets right to the point. All right, so uh, I'm looking at here, first things first. We have, uh, let's see, today is what, the 29th? And tomorrow, so there's nothing today on the, on the schedule, obviously, the trading day is over anyway, pretty much. We have tomorrow on the 30th, Germany, harmonized index of consumer prices. And then we have China, non-manufacturing PMI. So those numbers aren't a big deal. On the 31st, for the pound GDP, all right, again, those are not big market movers. All right, on the 31st, also for the euro, consumer price index, not big market mover. Now, on the 31st at 8 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, we have a speech from, from the president here. We also have uh, the ADP employment change, which comes out at 8.15. ADP employment change could be a possible uh, peak into the unemployment report, which comes out on Friday, okay, uh, the, the non-farm payrolls. That's an important number, okay, it's the non-farm payrolls. So ADP can give a glimpse into that. So it's not a bad idea to just be aware of it you know, no matter what you're trading, okay? So that's again at 8.15 a.m. On, uh, on the 31st. So then we have on Friday, the 1st of April, we have Germany retail sales, we have ISM manufacturing PMI, and non-farm payrolls at 8.30 EDT. Very important. That's probably the most important scheduled economic number we get each month. It's the first Friday of every month. Okay, so that can affect the stock market, it can, it can affect currencies, it can affect bonds, it can affect everything. So you need to be aware of it. Recent numbers, whether they're good or bad, haven't had a major effect like we used to see on the market, you know, years ago. I mean, there used to be some crazy moves. Now it's like, eh, you know, you get some movement for the first maybe 15, 20 minutes, and then it's just kind of, it's not a big market mover like it used to be, but it still doesn't hurt to be aware of it. Okay, so that's the first thing I wanted to cover. Let's get into the next thing here. Uh, I want to talk about Bitcoin, and like I said, then I want to talk about the bond market real quick, and then I'm going to answer your questions. So again, please share your questions in the chat, whether you're on uh, TradingView or if you're on the other one that I'm simulcasting on. Here, let me just make sure I can see you guys. Okay, cool. Say hello, everyone, and please put your questions in the chat now. All right, also press the like button. Uh, that's good feedback for me, and if, if you can, register for the channel if you'd like to get some more uh, notifications from from you know each platform whenever I'm doing one of these all right so let's talk about Bitcoin real quick I see a question in the chat what is a good price to buy enter Bitcoin all right well here's the thing this is what we need to pay attention to we didn't call we didn't call this trade this signal over here it wasn't a very good signal you have to understand something make sure you guys can hear me with my microphone hold on let me adjust my microphone here real quick um, okay so you need to understand something. I don't want it to be, I don't want it to be in the picture because people make fun of me with this microphone. All right, hold on. Let me put it over here. Hold on a second. All right. There we go. Okay, so what you need to understand is that um, we, we're looking at probabilities, right, around levels. 
People think that you always have to be in the market or that there's always action right now. Sure, there's price action, but it doesn't mean that it's going to be high probability. We trade rules, right? And that's one of the things I wrote about in my trading view report yesterday. And by the way, if you saw my trading view report uh, and you have questions about it, now would be a good time to put the question in the chat because it's hard for me to go over. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's hard for me to go over to the trading view comment section and answer all those. So if you see the report and you want to ask a question, please put it in the chat there. All right, cool. So um, we follow rules is what my point is. And the rules, the reason why we follow rules is because they guide us into high probability situations. Because you can take any trade, right? But it doesn't mean that the probability is going to be good. And that's what people can't see. You have to understand, you know, it's human nature to go by what you see because it's part of our sensory way of doing things, right? We have sensors, our eyes, our ears, our taste you know, our feeling, our touch, right? Sensory. And so we see things and then you mix that with our ego and all the other emotional baggage that we have. And then we think we're in control. Okay. Meanwhile, we don't see what's actually going on behind the scenes. We don't know what's actually going on. So you can't go exactly by what you see. You have to look at the context. So my point is this, we go by rules. The rules have been telling us don't trade Bitcoin. Okay. We follow a very specific swing trade strategy. And there was a buy signal back here. I mean, I'll call this a buy signal, but it wasn't ideal for one. The only thing we had back here in this 50K area was the level. Level is good, but it's not enough. Okay, so we had that, but I didn't like the setup. And since we have a trade on that we've been in, I don't want to get people overexposed. So we didn't send the idea out. Okay. Um, yeah, so now it's been it's up a, a couple of maybe about what, four, four, four or 5,000 points since that area, which was what, Thursday or Friday, I think this was developing. Okay, there was, so that, that candle back there was not ideal. The level was good. It broke, it went higher, and okay, here we are now fooling around at 57.6, all right? So again, to CC's question, buy, enter Bitcoin, or what is a good price? Definitely not here. Look what you're going into, all right? You have this 57K area resistance, which is a proven resistance because price reacted back there. That's number one. Number two, you see this large rectangle I have at the top of the chart here. That's a reversal zone. That's why I have it there. Okay, price has reversed inside that zone previously. It had trouble back here, right? It was trying to give these little buy signals back here, which we ignored, and it sold off. Again, people that are following small time frames are not going to have this perspective. They're all caught up on the small time frames. It's not the same weight as a daily chart. All right, so we use the daily chart only for swing trades. Now, here we are again, testing that resistance. Why would I want to buy Bitcoin at a resistance? Now, it's possible that we break out. Why? Because we have a higher low over here, and when there's a higher low, it's often followed by a higher high in a bullish trend. This trend hasn't changed. It's still bullish, okay? From, from what I can see here, there's nothing that has changed. So bigger picture, broader view, Bitcoin is still bullish. Right. As much as all these bears are coming out and saying Bitcoin is blah, blah, blah. It's not blah, blah, blah. It's bullish because that's what the levels and that's what the chart says. I don't have an opinion. I let the market tell me. Now, we are at a resistance. So this is conflicting. Yes, it should be strong. We should theoretically make the higher high if the trend is going to stay intact. And 66K is the next inflection point up in that area. All right. The question is, can we clear this resistance? That's where the risk comes in. I'm not willing to take the risk, all right? It's, it's the probability is low. It could fake out again. And remember, when we send out trade ideas, we're not the only ones in it, right? So we do have to take that into account um, and be very responsible and conservative in that sense. So if the risk doesn't look good, I'm not taking it. And the, here's the problem with the risk here. It may fail, right? If it fails to, if it fails to break out and we're buying this thing at 57K, 50K is the support. So would I have to risk 7,000 points to hopefully make 7,000 points? Hopefully. It needs to clear 61K. Not worth the risk. So we leave it alone. There'll be other opportunities to buy. Now, if you're a day trader, none of this is relevant. Okay? I'm not talking about day trade strategies. You need to know the difference. If you don't, you probably shouldn't be trading real money, especially on a day trade time frame. Now, 
Here's what I do want to see for a new swing trade law on Bitcoin. I want to see a test of either the 50K support. I don't know if the market's going to deliver that, but that's what I'd like to see. That would be ideal. Or I want to see a higher low, okay, in this area here. That's what, around the 54 and a half, around that area right there. That's where I want to see a test and a reversal. I'd be open to a swing trade idea because that would be a higher low. I'd be looking then for the breakout at that point. I'd be more confident about it. Now, if all of this fails, like from where it is right now, then that would confirm, or I, I shouldn't say confirm because actually we're still further away from that, but it would, it would be more of a clue that this thing is in a broad wave four. Now, right now, there's not, there's, we don't have much evidence of a broad wave four. I'm referring to Elliott wave here. Um, wave fours are large consolidations, okay, like gold, for example, since the August high. Now, this, this right now is still in line with this trend, although it could be in a wave four. So I'm not going to be opinionated by it. I need to see proof. And the first piece of that proof will be a break of 50K. All right. So we got a long way to go before we see any of that. That's why I'm not going to trade on those type of opinions. OK, so either we get to a level and it gives me the setup and, and I know that probability is more in my favor or I do nothing. OK, because I don't lose money doing nothing. And that's what people need to understand. OK, cool. So that's my Bitcoin rant. Um, I want to again, like I said, I want to spend more time on your questions today. Man, that's 10 minutes. I talk too much. All right, so let me just say hi to everyone. CC, hi Shay Shank, Karthik, good to see you. Arnie, Is Isaac, uh, Arno, I'm sorry. Uh, Paul, good to see you all. Nita, hey, nice to see you. Reese, how you doing? Reese from Australia. Wow, it's crazy. It's crazy hours over there, Western Australia. Edwin, good to see you. Hey, Edwin, haven't seen you in a while. Nice to see you. All right, cool. Hey, everyone. Let me say hello, hi to everyone else here on Trading View. What do I have here? Fran and Ham Hamit. And Net and Visionary and all these people, Net, Netlux, Eric, good to see you all. Good to see you all. Cool. Oh, and some Eric. Thank you, Eric. 200 coins. Thank you. I, could, I appreciate that. You don't have to do that. You don't have to send me anything. Um, you know, I'm just doing this to help out the community and stuff, but thank you. Okay, cool. So let's, let's talk about the bonds real quick. That's my Bitcoin thing. Again, if you have questions about Bitcoin, if you have questions about my trading view analysis, put them in the trading view chat. Or any other questions okay now let's get to let's just talk about the bonds real quick they're important okay I usually I'm not a bond trader I don't look at the bonds normally um, so they're not you know they're usually not a big thing on my radar in fact they're like watching they're watching like paint dry but worse okay it's usually like watching a snail paint a house and then watching it dry it's really bad anyway but here's why they're so important right now is because they're a sign of interest rates and Rising rates are bad for everything, okay? They're bad for homes. They're bad for servicing large loans, debt, all that other stuff. And a lot of businesses and companies will be affected if interest rates go higher. Now, look at the bond market, right? Look at US 10. This is the 10-year note. And look at this price action here, right? So bond prices are inverse to bond yields. So lower prices, which is what this shows over here, Lower prices imply higher yields. Higher yields are interest rates. So this does not look good. I see a lower high, which I've been watching all week, the previous week, talking about this lower high. I'm expecting a lower low, unless we produce a double bottom at 94.12, okay? But a lower low means rates are going higher. Now, I watched a couple of YouTube videos over the previous few days about hyperinflation and all this other stuff and this and that and whatever, all these experts giving their opinions. Okay, that's cool. And everyone's saying, oh, you know, it should be in gold. It should be in physical gold. It should be in physical silver and blah, 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 blah. And you know what they said? Oh, but gold is, is kind of depressed right now. And they're talking about the manipulation and blah, 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 right? My question, you know, and one guy says, well, you know, gold, gold is in a uh, technical correction. Technical correction? Uh, okay, so you sat there and told me that, you know, hyperinflation, buy gold, blah, blah, blah. But they can't explain this. They can't explain this weakness in gold. All right, so I don't look for answers. I just go by the price action. If gold wants to be weak, it wants to be weak. Maybe there's deflation. I don't know. But the point is, US 10 is telling us that interest rates want to go up right now. I don't fight it. I accept it. Okay, so people can have all the opinions they want. It doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't matter what you or I think. It doesn't matter. What matters is price. 
because the smart money out there is going to act on information that we don't have access to, whatever that could be. It could be inside government information. It could be whatever, okay? Um, they'll leave the footprints. The smart money will leave footprints, and that's all I'm interested in, especially for the short term. Okay, so that's my rant on the US-10. It's If you're in stocks, if you're in currencies, if you're in and pretty much anything, you should keep an eye on this because it will give it a sign or a clue as to what is likely to follow. If this keeps going this way, the stock market's not going to go much further. And that's why we've been so slow on calling out trades. We don't want to be exposed or overexposed to these stocks. Let me just give you a quick stock example. Right, look, AMD, for example, okay? We all know AMD, semiconductor stock. And look, I mean, it's trying to find a, 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 some buying here near this potential higher low. But if those interest rates continue to go where they're going, this thing's going to break the support, okay? Like many other stocks that are in a similar position. Now, you have all these people out there that think the stock market's safe, that buying a pullback is the right thing to do. In the right environment, it's the right thing to do. But with interest rates rising, if that continues, these things are going to break their supports, okay? I mean, they're not going to have much of a choice. So that's what you have to watch out for. Anyway, so that's my rant on that. Let's get to your questions now. Those are the only two things I wanted to cover. Okay, uh, on my part, and I still talk for 15 minutes. Man, I gotta stop. All right, so let's, let's get some questions here. Let me get into their questions. Again, if you're new to the way I do things, just ask in, in the chat, whatever chat you're in. If it's a coin, just put USD or USDT after it, and I'm gonna go through the chats now to see what kind of questions I can answer. Okay, cool, so let's start here with Arno. Can you look at TTD and PLTR? Okay, so those are stocks, TTD, let's take a look. All right, so the trade desk. All right, here's a situation that I just described with AMD. Look, look at the recent buy action dating back here. What is this? Uh, early March. And we're retesting that area. Okay, so the general trend has been bullish for some time. And then we've been pulling back this corrective structure that we've been looking at. I'm going to highlight the corrective structure. We've been looking at this right for a couple of months now. And now we're testing. We're going back into that support area. So look, location, great for a potential long. But there's no price action that supports that, okay? In fact, like I said, if that interest rate situation continues and the stock market, let's just take a look at the S&P real quick. If the, look where the stock market is. All right, wow. This is how it closed? All right, it looked much worse earlier, and it closed strong. So that's interesting. And it's not in line with what the bonds are doing. I would expect more weakness here. So whatever the reason is, it is. It's testing the highs. So in this situation, if the stock market pulls back, all right, now I'm talking about relative strength, and TTD is fooling around at a support while the, while the S&P is pushing a high, what happens when the S&P really pulls back? This thing will likely break the support. So that's why I wouldn't touch this thing relative to where the S&P is right now. I wouldn't touch it. Even if it's not highly correlated, I'd be very careful with this because these things if the stock market's rising, there should be some support. You shouldn't see a solid red close like this. I mean, we still have about 30 minutes before this closes, but still, you shouldn't see that. Okay, so I would stay away from it right now. Keep an eye on the location, but I wouldn't be getting involved in that, especially as a swing trade. Okay, PLTR. Visionary. Hey, Visionary, thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, ARC, CEL. Okay, cool. No problem. I'm going to take a look at those. Thanks for uh, asking, and thank you for the coins. I appreciate that. Okay, so... Uh, Palantir, you know, this has uh, been a popular stock in recent times. Okay, again, decent location, broader trend, bullish. Okay, and we're getting a potential double bottom after a nice pullback over these previous few months. Again, similar situation to the S&P. All right, now let's take a look at the NASDAQ just for comparison purposes. Now look at the NASDAQ. I've been concerned about this, right? And I've been talking about the mixed market situation. NASDAQ isn't closing as strong, although it came back. It was minus, what, 120 points earlier today? And it, and it came back strong. But look, when you watch stuff like this and you turn on like the mainstream news and this and that, they're going to say, oh, the stock market bounced and blah, 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 blah. But you have to keep an eye on the bigger picture, all right? Because that's really all that matters, whether it's a swing trade, whether it's an investment. The bigger picture resistance is here. So how does that relate to PLTR? Well, PLTR is sitting on support. Now, the NASDAQ is trying to bounce. I'd be expecting this thing to at least trying, at least be trying to bounce as well. And it's not, okay? It's going back to the support. So I don't like it right now. I like the location, but 
the, the general market, the NASDAQ, the S&P, they need to pull back and then this needs to not break support. That's where I'd be interested because then as the market recovers off of that higher low, I'd expect you know, this thing to be more supportive and start pushing. So I don't like this conflicting environment. Um, so I'm going to stay away from these supports, although the locations are attractive. The relative strength is not. So I hope that makes sense. Thanks for asking. All right, let me jump over to the other chat. I see a lot of action going on over here, and I want to make sure I answer people's questions because, you know, I'll, I'll be at this, you know, for, for an hour, and I haven't gotten to anyone's questions. Okay, so let's see what I got here. All right, cool. Eric, good to see you. Let me just see what else I got here. Hold on. Just give me a second. All right, so uh, Net has a question. Yeah, it's been up 8 or so percent a little more. Starting to get towards heavy resistance territory. Be a battle. Okay, so he's talking about Bitcoin. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, cool, Visionary, cool. Uh, and thanks for joining. C asks, hi, nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. Have a look at XAG USD, silver, the silver, um, uh, the silver CFD. Now, here we go. Like I said, I watched a bunch of videos talking about deflation and inflation and hyperinflation, all that stuff. And they brought up silver, they brought up gold. Okay, of course. Now, this is paper silver. All right, this is the CFD. And look at this. Now, we know in the physical world, we know for a fact that there's a shortage of silver and gold. You can't get, you know, based on the information that I've been getting, uh, you can't get any physical silver or gold unless you pay ridiculously higher amounts above spot, okay, for, for, for the physical, you know, whether it's a coin, whether it's a bar, whatever it is, a generic bar of silver. So that is strange it doesn't make sense so here's the thing these markets are acting irrational we can't argue with them they are what they are right so for whatever reason silver is acting a little weaker it's going to follow gold you have to keep in mind if gold doesn't go anywhere here let's go back to gold silver is not going to go anywhere now these things now gold hasn't made that new low yet here's my argument on gold as we can see the bigger picture it's still correcting that broader bullish move that peaked in august we are coming to a fundamentally stronger time for gold. Usually like May, June, July is typically a stronger, stronger or seasonal time for gold um, for, for you know, certain reasons. And maybe gold will find a higher low during that time and start its rally. But right now, all we can see here is there's a lower high established and it's going for the low. All right. And there's no reversal candle in there right now. That's gold. So if there's no reversal there, I don't expect silver to really do anything. XA, uh, XAG, USD. So I would hold off on this CFD. Now, keep in mind, silver is, is um, there's been this massive short, and they've been talking about this forever in silver. So one thing to keep in mind is when silver goes, it's probably going to go, all right, like big. So that's where bigger picture fundamentals, you have to keep an eye on that. Keep that in the back of your mind. But as far as right now, I'll tell you the levels to keep an eye on for, for this thing. And that would be this range low area here. What is that? Around 25, 24 and a half area, right? And that's where it's fooling around right now. This is not a bad place to be picking up physical silver. But as far as this price action, paper silver is not going anywhere. All right. So this is an inflection point. Your next level, if that's cleared, which again, these things just they do whatever they want to do. Um, you're looking at the 22 area. All right. So those would be the areas I'd be most interested in for something like silver if you're interested in the CFD. Now, for those of you that do not care for the CFD, and I don't blame you because it could be a pain because you have to pay interest on these things through swaps, uh, trying to hold them longer term. You can buy stock. OK, like AG, for example, is a silver mining stock. First Majestic Silver. It's not a very expensive stock. It's at 1533. You could see recently when, when it was, there was that talk not too long ago about the, um, you know, with the low float, high short interest stocks. This was one of them. And you could see this thing went nuts, right? It went to $24 and then gave it right back. But this one is probably because of that low float, high short float situation. You combine that with a short squeeze in silver. This thing is probably in a good position to go somewhere. And I do like this double bottom location, even though it can drift lower. Uh, for longer term, this might not be a bad idea or a good alternative to something like XAG. All right, so I just wanted to point that out. Thank you for bringing that one up. Again, a lot of conspiracy theory stuff with that. Don't get wrapped up in that inflationary argument and this and that, whatever. They've been talking about hyperinflation. 
I don't know how we're going to get that until the bonds stop doing what they're doing. Okay, well, interest shouldn't be going higher if our dollar is going to be worthless. So, you know, all this talk about the dollar is not going to be the world reserve currency anymore. And just be careful with that. It doesn't hurt to have some sort of precaution, maybe by, you know, 5% or 2% of your net worth or whatever in physical gold or silver and just put it somewhere, store it in, you know, somewhere safe. And that's like your hedge against something like that. But don't go nuts. There's a lot of that. They use a lot of that, those fear techniques, because a lot of these people are just trying to sell subscriptions. You have to be careful with that. And look at the source. I mean, I was very um, uh, aware of the information that I was watching. I was very aware of who was delivering the information and what, you know, what they had to sell on top of it, even though they weren't actually selling anything directly. Okay, anyway. All right, so thanks for that question. Let me see. Bears are coming out so they can scoop up some more for themselves. Okay, I mean, that, and that's, as far as gold and silver go, yeah, I mean, manipulation, they like to push these things lower because, hey, that's, that's an old, very old game, and I definitely don't doubt that, okay? Especially paper, in the paper world, they can do whatever they want in the paper world. Okay, Eric, could we look at EW structure and FIB levels of Bitcoin on the daily? You just answered my EW request. Oh, request. Okay, cool. Okay, no problem. All right, let's jump over to the other one here. All right, so uh, Andre, how does, okay, let's take a look here. These look like coins. Oh, are they coins? Um, is this a coin or, or not? Oh, Discovery Incorporated. Oh, man. Okay, so he mentions this uh, possible bounce. No way. I mean, look, I, I understand why you, you might look at that and say, well, it's nice pullback. Certainly, nice pullback, all right. Um, and you have this little tail situation, but the problem with this is the momentum is too sharp. Okay, so in these situations, you could try playing that bounce, but it's very risky, all right? Um, this momentum may continue. What I like to see in these situations, because this gets a lot of people into trouble, believe it or not. They buy the pullback, oh yeah, it should bounce. And it might bounce a little bit and you stay in it, and then it goes for that next low, right? Wait for stability. So right now we know, based on this thing, the low is 34.60. This thing right now is at 41.50, okay? So I would like to see stability develop, meaning a failed low or double bottom in those mid 30s. That's where I'd be more confident trying to play a bounce because that tells me that that bearish momentum is drying up, okay? Because if the bearish momentum is intact, it should not make a double bottom. It should go lower. It should keep pushing lows. So if it doesn't push that low, that means something is changing. It doesn't guarantee I'm going to get the bounce, but it tells me at least that the bearish momentum is no longer in favor and at least probability favors a, a bounce better in that situation rather than buying a single bottom like this. Okay, that's usually I go into that when I want to see stability. It's because these move the bearish initial bearish move is too sharp and this thing can continue. Okay, so that's the answer for that one. Thank you for bringing that one up. Uh, v I A C. Wow, same situation. Viacom, well, I don't know what's going on here, but uh, obviously these cable networks are having problems. Um, let's see. So the high the other day was $99, and this thing is at $45? These things lost half their value? All right, look, whatever. That's the, whatever's going on, but they, it's been coming anyway, these, these garbage networks. Um, a, same situation. I wouldn't touch this until stability develops. I don't know what the catalyst is behind this, um, but whatever it is, it's, it's significant, okay? So definitely need to wait for stability. I mean, look at the trend before that. Something, something that's trending like this, right, nice and smooth, should not see such a sharp pullback. That is out of proportion. So I would hold off on those. Thank you for bringing those up. Those are definitely good ones for the radar. I wonder what that's about. All right, cool. So let me see what else I got here. Back to the other one. Um, okay, no, I, Netflix, Netflix says, no, I talk a good amount. Okay, I don't know. I think I talk too much. All right, Benio, hey, from New Zealand. Nice, New, Ze New Zealand. It's got to be crazy hours over there. You want to listen to me from New Zealand at like 3 a.m. or 4 a.m.? I, I don't know. I, wouldn't, I don't know if I'd want to listen to me at that time. Victor from Spain. Ah, uh, que tal? I can speak Spanish. Um, uh, what are these? Que tal? What's the other one? They I'm not, I'm not going to do a Spanish lesson right now. Um, anyway, mucho gusto. Yeah, there you go. All right. Uh, okay, Portugal. Obrigado. Wow, I've gotten all international today. Portugal, nice. All right, New York. Cool. Yeah, that's, I'm in the New York area here. 
All right, so, you know, it's been very, it's kind of, the weather's been kind of weird. All right, cool. So let me see what else we got here. I love how you articulated your view. Very, okay, cool. Thank, I appreciate that, uh, Faye. Thank you. All right, follow you. Oh, four years. Yeah, that's, that's, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, let me see what other questions we got here. Hey, I like the way you describe the risk and do nothing to not lose. Well, that's a very true thing. All right, people, look, people want to make money. I understand that's what we're all here for. But people don't want to hear about the risk, okay? I, I've come across a lot of videos, a lot of articles and this and that, and they talk about all the good stuff, but what happens if it goes wrong, right? I mean, they, they talk about, oh, you know, Cardano has this whole list of things that they're going to accomplish over the coming year, right? But there's no probability thing next to each of those items saying, what are the chances that each of these items are going to be accomplished. What if one isn't, okay? Or what about if there's some kind of failure along the way or some kind of other risk? They don't cover that stuff. And that's really, and you know what they say if things go wrong? Well, the market, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, you know, markets are risky. Altcoins are risky. You know, they're very risky. They're speculative assets, right? That's when they come up with the disclaimers. But I'm up that up front, you know, risk first. That, that's why we focus on risk and I'd rather not be in anything so that when the high probability opportunities do appear, I have my money intact. But more importantly, I have my confidence intact because without confidence, you're not doing anything in this game. Scared money never wins. OK, something to keep in mind always. I mean, whether you're a day trader, whether you're a swing trader or an investor, you must be confident. And that comes from understanding the situation. Oh, G Mantle, thank you. Greetings from the Bay Area. Can you please look at, sure, NEO, XPEV, and EV stocks that seem to be, okay, no problem, no problem. Cool, cool, thank you, thank you very much. I, I definitely will take a look at that. Anyway, so just on my thing about risk and the bigger picture and confidence, you need to be able to put these things together. And if you're unsure, the best thing to do is just stay out because there will always be opportunities in the market. You're not missing out on anything. No matter how much people are telling you you're missing out or your friends are making money and blah, 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 there will always be more opportunities. That's what you have to keep in mind. But your capital is not infinite, right? So if you make mistakes, that money's gone and then your confidence is lower. That's more important than anything else. All right, so let me take a look here. I, got, I have a bunch of questions. More questions. All right. Um, you're willing to take a look at the chart of altcoin. Tell me what you think when you're done with bonds. Okay, which that net lux. I'm not sure which coin you're talking about. Maybe you could put that in the channel again. Um, all right. Byte, Byte Federal. I know Byte Federal. Hey, how are you? Uh, what do you think about Beam USDT? Okay, Beam USDT. Byte Federal. I know those guys. Is that, is that, I don't know. Which one of you guys it is, but ni nice to see you. All right, so Beam, uh, generally a strong look. I mean, trend clearly bullish, right? I see higher lows, higher highs, like many of these altcoins that we've seen in recent time. Now, this move here is where things are a little tricky. Higher low off of, what is this, 87 cents? Where's the higher high? Now, we're hesitant here, right? We have this bearish situation developing right now. Doesn't mean it's a trend change. This thing could be in a consolidation. All I know is we have a potential lower high, right, which is unconfirmed. How does this current candle close? Do we take out the low, which is basically like the dollar ten area? If we do, then that is most likely cluing us into the fact that we are in a uh, consolidation. All right. Now, in those situations, there are many coins in this situation. They consolidate for maybe a few weeks and then they break to their next level. Consolidations or a triangle uh, are typically trend continuation patterns or momentum continuation patterns. So we know that this trend is generally bullish, right? So if this thing is going to consolidate, you know, over the next few weeks or whatever, the key areas you want to watch are the range lows, and that would be here at 97 cents or basically a dollar. So if it could retest that area and it holds, that would be a great spot to pick up some more. Now I'm not a big fan of swing trading these things. Um, you know, and they have a tendency to follow Bitcoin. I don't know what the story with this one is, but all I know right now is there's no higher high and it's possibly in a range. So I would be looking attractive area again, $1. I wouldn't be buying this thing right now because you're in the middle of the range and it can go either way. 
if you're more fundamentally inclined or more fundamentally aware of what's going on, because some of these things, you know, people are very in tune. I know you guys at Byte Federal are very, uh, you know, you, you have more of a, a grasp on the technical side. I mean, as far as how fundamentals go, you guys are, are, are basically, you know, uh, computer guys. You know, maybe you have some inside information or something that will give you more confidence to hold on to something like this. But from a chart perspective, I would, I would be looking at that $1 area for a buying opportunity or to accumulate more if you're into accumulating it. Okay, so thanks for asking. Um, okay, my trading career. Hi. Okay, cool. NAS, so you're right. NAS and the US 30. All right, so let's go over those real quick. I follow those very closely. Like I talked about before, this is a NASDAQ CFD, NASDAQ 100. And again, it's in this very conflicted, tough spot. So we can argue a few ways here. All right, we can argue that there's a higher low in place, right, off of this area right here, uh, which is what, 12,622. And, but there's no higher high. Now, this is a consolidation, it is a triangle that's developing here. And in theory, where there's a higher low, we should see a higher high, especially since the broader trend seems to still be bullish. But this is a tough spot. So I can't really make any judgments here until it proves itself one way or the other. Is this thing going to break higher? I don't know right here, right? All I know is I don't want to take any trades here at the current price. Either we test the low again, all right, at the 12.6 area, 12.6 and a half. Either we test that area and reverse again. That will give me more confidence that that low is holding and that we should break higher or we break that low and we keep going lower, right? Now, I'm positioned on the bearish side of this market, as people know, with the SQQQ. And, um, you know, I've been in that for, for a couple of weeks now. I have options. They're June options. So this thing needs to make its decision over the next couple of weeks. Otherwise, I'm going to have to start getting out of that. All right. If we start pushing this resistance area up in here, the 12, the 13 twos, we start taking that out. I'm going to have to get out and take the loss. OK, but right now this looks like it's shaping up for strength, but things can change quickly. So when it's indecisive like that, I have to wait and let the market show its hand. All right. So US 30. Now, here's an interesting thing. That's the Dow. The Dow is doing its own thing. Right. Look at that higher high on the Dow made the higher low, made the higher high. This trend is clearly intact. Keep in mind, this is only 30 stocks, 30 industrial stocks. Now the question is, do we fail up here? It's in failure territory, but it hasn't failed yet. Okay, the market closes in 15 minutes. Obviously it's not gonna fail today. But if I see a bearish candle develop tomorrow, a pin bar, uh, something bearish, and we start taking out daily lows, then that will be the signal. It will probably be the signal for the whole market to sell off because right now it seems like this is what's holding the market up. All right, you have industrial stocks. I was looking at Caterpillar earlier. Look at Caterpillar. All right, this trying to go with the Dow, right? It's a Dow stock and uh, not making that higher high, right? That's a lower high. So that's not a good sign when the Dow is pushing highs, which means there's only a couple of stocks pushing highs. It's not a broad rally. So that's why I'm suspect especially when the S&P and the NASDAQ are having a hard time, relatively speaking. I mean, look at the S&P. How is this thing going to close? Let's see. So it's, it's getting indecisive, right? One minute, look, it's looking strong. Let me get rid of this, block, this box. And, and now it's kind of hesitating again. I don't like hesitation at resistance levels. I just don't. And I'm not betting on this breakout, especially with the way interest rates are looking. Okay, um, this is more likely to fake out. So hope that answers your question there. Let me go back to my other chat. Um, okay, let me see. All right, Paul. Okay, cool. So I answered those. Good to see you. Reese. All right. Can you check out Cake, Cake, Cake B, USD, and Cake USDT? Okay. Cake, Cake B, USD. Let's take a look. All right. So here's Cake B, USD. So it's Cake against Binance Coin. All right. Um, nice general trend. I think this is one of those, someone was talking about this earlier uh, in, in, our, in our chat. So look, we have a broader bullish trend. Okay, very clear, very clear over here. Then you have this consolidation. By the way, uh, by Federal, this is the kind of consolidation, you know, I'd be anticipating for the coin that you just asked me for, right? Something like this. Now, this one here has broken out, it took out this resistance, this range high at 1466. And now it's trying to hold near the high. All right, so the, that's a sign of strength if it could stay up in here. 
but you're running the risk of this turning into a double top. Okay, so now if you're, here's the thing. The question that you have to ask or you can only answer for yourself is are you in this or are you looking to get into this? If you're in this, there's nothing to do here but let the thing do its job, all right? Because this is not real, this is not, there's no sell signal. You have an inside bar developing. If it takes out this inside bar high at 18, I would expect momentum to take this thing higher and at least go for the test of 21. You know, that could take a few days to develop. I'd be expecting something like that because this thing is generally strong, okay? So that's if you're in it. If you're not in it, this is where you're taking a lot of risk, right? So I'm, if you're in it, I'm expecting or I'm assuming you're in it from a great price. So letting it do its job is not a very risky thing to do, right? Because you should have some green. But if you're not in it and you have to take new risk, well, the question is how far can this thing pull back if you buy this thing right now at 1708? Well, your support is like in this area right here, okay? It's not exactly at that bottom at nine and a half. It's going to be between like nine and 12, okay? So if you're willing to take that kind of chance, um, you know, that's where you're measuring your risk from. If you're buying this thing at 17 and you're saying, all right, I'll hold it till 10, that's $7 of risk. That means in order to justify that risk, you need to make $7. What is the probability that this thing is going to run another $7 easily? That, that we don't know, right? All I know is you're facing a resistance at $21 where it can fail, and that's, what, $4 away? So the reward risk in that, in that, from that perspective doesn't make a lot of sense, okay? I have to risk $7 to hopefully get through that $4 barrier. That, that's, that's not favorable. So I want something where... You know, the upside is it's got a lot of potential, clear potential. You know, I'm, I'm risking $3 to make five or six or, or more. That's what I want to see. Okay, I'm not risking $3 here. Now, you can argue and say, well, what about this candle, the red candle low at 1533? It's too small. It's too tight. I can't use that. Most likely to get stopped out. You have to give it um, a more, you can't use one candle. Okay, and there needs to be structure. And the structure is all the way back here between 9 and like 12. That's where your structure is. So that's where you measure risk from. Okay, so anyway, thank you for asking about that one. Um, let me see what else we got here. So Cake USDT. So let's see, I'm expecting that to be something similar. Cake USDT. This is Cake against Tether. And um, so range bound, right? Now, I don't know if there's some more history to this. Maybe there is. But based on what I see here, again, you're in a similar situation. And you're near the range high. So I wouldn't be buying this now. I want to see you near range low, okay? That's where I want to see it if I'm interested in taking any type of position, whether it's a swing trade or even an investment. Now, one thing is if you want to invest in these things, perhaps you're very into the fundamental side and you really believe what they're doing and all that stuff. That's on you because I don't look at that stuff. But uh, as far as accumul accumulating inventory, right, if you want to do that at such a level because you're like, ah, oh, screw it, I need to be in this. Okay, well, you can adjust for your risk by just taking smaller, smaller position. If you were going to normally buy, you know, 100 coins, you buy 25 coins, all right? And if it goes lower, all right, then you can add into that, you can average into that because that was what you were going to do anyway instead of putting it all in at one price. If it goes higher, hey, at least you're still in it. And you want to add on a breakout or something, you can add, you know, that way. At least you're controlling your risk for if things go the wrong way. Because when they go the wrong way and they go quickly, the problem is we tend to rely on emotions. And when that happens, because especially if you don't have any kind of game plan or any type of expectations and you have a lot of other positions and they're all going red at the same time, you know, then you, you get into like, I need to do something. I need to do something. And usually you do something at the worst possible prices. Either you're banging it out, you're getting margined out of stuff or whatever, and it's at the bottom of the market, right? That's usually how extreme it has to get. So you want to avoid being in that type of situation by controlling your size at riskier prices if you're looking at it from that type of long-term perspective. Okay, so cool. Thanks for that question. Let me jump back here. Um, stream buffering. Anyone else or just me? I don't know. Um, let me check my, my connection. I, I didn't see any connection uh, errors here. Usually I get errors. I don't see any. So that could be just you. Um, net. Okay, so Eric, HBAR. HBAR, all right? HBAR USD. Let's take a look. This one's been a lot of talk. Now, this is a nice looking chart. Okay. Nice, clear, bullish trend. 
that's intact. Nice clear cut high or low and nice attempt at the high. Okay, very simple. I like all that. All right, all signs of strength. Now, again, if you're in this, I would let this thing do its job. Let it see if it can continue. Now you do have this large tail up here. So someone's selling something because obviously they can see the previous selling area, right? I mean, it's the same type of reaction, right? And you have a potential double top. Now, for that reason, I would not be taking new risk on here. I would not buy this now. Uh, if you're in it, like I said, give it a chance, see if it wants to continue this momentum where there's a higher low, it should be followed by a higher high. So this could be the start of it. But if you're trying to take on new risk now, the risk you face is it goes back and tests this low at 31 cents. So do you want to buy this thing at 38 cents and then watch it go to 31 cents? I, I don't. So I'd rather watch it go to 31 cents and reverse again. And that's where I'd be willing to take new risk. Okay, even if it's for a swing trade, like I said, I don't like swing trading these things. I'm not on top of all of their fundamental, um, you know, all the new things are coming out and all this and all that. I'm not on top of their fundamental stories. I just look at charts. So, and I don't like the location of this chart. Doesn't mean it can't keep going. I just don't like the location and I'm not willing to take risk at these prices. If I'm gonna take risk, I wanna see at least the better price, okay? And I usually tend, I usually think from a very short-term oriented swing trade perspective, just to keep, you know, just to uh, keep that in mind. Okay, so thanks for bringing that one up. Um, let me see what else we got here. Doesn't, doesn't gold look like a cup and handle on the monthly? So, so uh, Benil, so that's a, that's a good observation. Now, monthly, all right, so let's take a look at a monthly chart. I don't like to look at time frames that are too far out. Like I won't look at weekly unless or monthly unless I just really want to see where we are on top in terms of bigger picture levels. I mean, this situation, yeah, sure, you can argue, you know, you're, you're going back to like 2018 to 2018 low and, you know, you're saying, uh, you know, cup and handle. Yeah, right, possible, but that's, and that's cool, but you can't get opinionated by that. You have to also look at the recent price action. And that recent price action is not, um, you know, it's not giving us any, there's no buy signals there, right? Although the location is definitely attractive and maybe it will follow through in theory and fundamentally it should, but I don't go by logic because logic doesn't guide markets, okay? Um, irrational, irrational sentiment does. So gold wants to go lower for whatever reason, go right ahead. You know, I'll buy some more gold mining stocks, uh, which is what I'm interested in. So anyway, thanks for bringing that one up. Okay, so, uh, Netflix, one, what is that? Uh, Sone, oh no, one, one USD. Okay, sure, O-N-E, -O -N -E. hold on. And, and again, I want to thank you all for your great questions. I'm going to tr do my best to answer them all, especially those people that gave me, that, that, that sent me coins. I, I definitely want to get to your questions. So thank you, and I, I will get to those. Um, before I cut this thing off, before I turn this thing off, I will get to those questions, okay? Um, all right, so Harmony, U.S. dollar. All right, and now this again, this is a daily chart. So let's take a look. Again, great, great trend. A lot of these things look like this, right? I mean, recent run-ups. These are great. Look at the current price action though. So people get all caught up, right? You're gonna go on YouTube, you're gonna watch videos about it and this and that, and they're gonna say all these great things and this thing's gonna, next million dollar maker, blah, 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 they're gonna say, right? Meanwhile, you got a bearish pin bar developing, right? I do not wanna buy into a bearish pin bar. I don't care how great it is. So here's the thing, you have a potential double top with a bearish pin bar. If I was inclined to short these things, that's a short signal. That would be a very aggressive short signal because it's going against the trend. But that's what I like to see when I, when, when I want to short something. Okay, and again, I'm not saying short this thing. Just want to be clear. But that's what I want to see if I was going to do such a thing, right? Which means don't buy it. I would not buy this now. If you're in it, hopefully you've locked in something along the way, I would hope, by, by the time it's reached these prices and now that it's developing this potential sell signal. So if it pulls back and you're interesting at, interested at a more attractive price, I would look at this level here. All right, hold on, let me get a, let me get a horizontal line there. Range low at, uh, what is that? 14, 14 and a half cents around there. That's what I'd be looking at. 
okay? That's an attractive area relative to this broader trend. If it breaks that, which again, anything is possible, you know, I'd be looking at this area here because that's where you have some price noise, okay? Um, so you're looking at what, 10 cents, 10 to 12 cents in that area right there. That's the next support area I'd be looking at. And that, of course, the, the lower support would be more attractive for a larger time frame type of trade, like a position trade, right? That would be a more attractive price, whether you're averaging into that or you're starting to buy it there. If it takes that out, then I'd, I'd be waiting for this thing to find some stability, all right, before doing anything else. Oh, hey, everyone, hey, uh, Asagel, thank you, and Faye, thank you, thank you. Again, you don't have to send me any coins. I'm going to get to your questions, but I see some questions there. Thank you, thank you, and I'm going to answer them. really appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, so uh, that's the story here with one USD, all right? Thank you for asking that question. All right, let me go back to the other one. I have to jump back and forth here. How am I doing with time? Uh, okay, not too bad. So let's see what else we got. Again, I want to try to answer as many questions as I possibly can. Um, okay, hey, Rick is back. I see Rick. Let me just, I'm just going back here. I'm going through the chat. Man, I got a lot of questions. Um, okay, hold on. Let me, let me just catch up here. So I, I, I was cake. Um, okay, so I think I got Shay Shank here. Hold on a second. Um, oh, whoa. Wait, wait, wait. Just catching up. Just catching up. Sorry about the delay. Just give me a moment here. All right, here we go. So I have, oh man, it just seems like more and more questions just piling up. All right, Tesla. I'm in Tesla. Attractive area. Okay, Edwin asks about Tesla. Very popular stock. Netlux. Thank you, Netlux. Uh, thanks for all you do. If you have time, sure, sure. I'm going to try to get to everything. All the people that send me Whatever, I'm going to do my best to answer your questions because, again, I appreciate that. You don't have to do that, but I, I will do my best to answer your questions. Thank you so much. I do appreciate that. Okay, so Tesla, very popular stock. A lot of people trying to buy this pullback, okay? Tough stock because, you know, people are probably confused. It's supposed to be good. All right, well, here's the thing. This is potentially a higher low, all right? Um, you have, now look at the current price action. So first, Let's talk about the broader trend. That's bullish. No question, bullish. Then it had this correction. Okay, fine. Now, since that, it's had this little minor correction, relatively speaking. And here we are at a potential higher low. So like many other stocks that we looked at, and someone had a question about the electric vehicle stocks. I've been watching them because they're all pushing supports. You have a pin bar. What time is it? Okay, so this thing is closed. All right. We have a bullish pin bar that developed at a potential higher low area. Plus the other day, right, Friday, this thing, the low was at 600. This thing is just in that area again. So can this thing bounce from here? All right, this is an attractive place. It is an attractive place for a new long. Now, Edwin asks, um, is this an attractive area for taking some bites now? Oh, well, yes, uh, especially if it takes out the high of the pin bar, which is 1616. So you're looking at like 1620, 16, 16, I'm sorry, uh, 620, 625, something like that. You'd want to see that breakout occur tomorrow. And I'd be looking for another leg higher. Okay, now you have to keep something in mind. This thing is just trying to reverse. You have to look at this in terms of the S&P. All right. And oh, uh, uh, Ian, Ian Douglas. Thank you, Ian, so much, Ian. I missed the BTC part. Well, Ian, just go back. You could just rewind the thing and, and watch it from the beginning. Do you think we'll see a double bottom at 50K? I'll, I'll answer that question, but I, I, I spent a bunch of time on that in the beginning of the video. So if you just go back, you can see that. Thank you for asking that. Now, again, I'll review that again uh, once I get all these other questions answered. So Tesla, look at it in terms of the S&P. Here's how the S&P closed, okay? What does this look like to you? All right, Ed, Edwin and everyone else in the chats, what does this look like to you? This is pretty clear, all right? We have this over here, and then we have this over here. I mean, here, here's the interactive portion of, this, of, the, of my uh, session. What does that look like to you? So that looks like a double top, right? So if this sticks and we take out this low tomorrow, I expect stocks like Tesla and many other ones that are at the supports, they're probably gonna break those supports. So you have to be very careful here. So going back to Tesla, if you want to get involved in something like this, what I would do to, to, um, to, to, to manage that risk or to uh, 
compensate. That's the word I was looking for. If you want to compensate for that risk, I would take a smaller than usual position. So if it's a swing trade and you normally risk 1% of your, of your capital or whatever, maybe risk half a percent or something. Or if you normally buy 100 shares, buy 15 shares, right? Something smaller because if these things break their supports, I mean, Tesla can easily give back $100 here, easily. So that's what you have to keep in mind. The S&P is not in a favorable position for these things to go. Now, this thing may pop and it may give you that buy signal that I'm talking about tomorrow. It may do that. But the thing is, it may not go very far. Right. What if this thing only goes up, you know, 20, 30 points, which, OK, it's good for a day trade. But what if it goes like halfway and then the market sells off? Right. And then you're stuck and then you're going to say, oh, should I get out? Should I stay in? It's Tesla. It's a good stock, blah, blah, blah. And now you started out with a certain amount of risk. And now that risk increases because now you choose to stay in it. Right. That's why your trades have to be very well defined right from the start. Is it a swing trade? Is it a position trade? You have to manage risk specifically for each type of trade. Right. The, the, the risk management is dramatically different. All right. So anyway, um, yeah. So attractive area. Yes. S&P not favorable. All right, so mixed. That's how I would compensate for it if you want to get involved in that. But, you know, obviously Tesla's a good stock, and if you want to try to play that bounce, okay. So that, that's what I have to say about that. Thank you for asking. Uh, let me just get through a few more questions here. Um, thanks. Hey, no problem, Z. Okay, cool. Hey, Jimmy. Hey, Shubham. Good to see you, Oscar. They asked this a while ago. From Chile. Wow, Chile. That's cool. Um, welcome. All right, Karthik. There are loads of YouTubers who talk rubbish for hours, so you don't talk a lot. But, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. There is a lot of, it's a good word. <laughs> Karthik uses the word rubbish. I, I like that word. It's a good word. Reese, uh, 3.20 a.m. Oh, man, 3.20. And that was almost like an hour ago. So it's like 4.20 a.m. now in Western Australia. Maria, hey, good to see you. Okay, can you take a look at GRT USD for a swing trade? Okay, GRT USD. Let's take a look. All right, um, this is on Coinbase. All right, now for a swing trade, how much is this thing? Okay, it's a dollar seventy-six right now. All right, general trend bullish. I like that. All right, um, recent structure. This is a consolidation. Okay, so broad higher low, not bad. Okay, supports the bullish trend. Now, as far as location, all right, and current price action. There's a problem here. Here's the problem. You're right in the middle of the range. So because of that, I don't like it as a swing trade. This is a 50-50 area. And this is one of the arguments I was making about Bitcoin too. It's in a tough spot and it can go either way. I wrote about this in my trading view article. It's like a 50-50, highly random. I, I don't like random. It may work out, but I want things to work out more in my favor, right? When I'm willing to take that risk. And I'm not, if I'm going to gamble, I can go to a casino, right, and play roulette or something. Why am I going to sit here in front of my computer and be miserable? So I would prefer to see a pullback or at least a higher low. So more attractive prices would be around, what, 130, the 130 area, something like that, low 130s. Because, again, you're at right now, you're at 176, right? So at least 130s, 140s. Something like that would be better for a swing trade based on this structure. Now, again, I could be wrong. This thing may break out and just keep going. I'm not willing. I, w I would not be willing to take that risk, especially since I know that these locations are typically 50 50. What if it pops up a little bit, tests this resistance and next thing you know, it's back at the support. Also, keep in mind a lot of these coins, um, some of them I notice they're not following Bitcoin like they used to. Some of them are starting to do their own thing. OK. That's cool. Many of them are still following Bitcoin. So the question you must ask is, what if Bitcoin pulls back? You know, Bitcoin is still generally the leader. Bitcoin has been trying. But what if this turns into a red candle, which it can easily do at such a location? OK, where are these coins going to go? That's why I'd rather not buy the middle. I'd rather buy a support and I'd want to see Bitcoin giving me a similar uh, type of signal. OK, so thanks for asking. Good question. I hope I answered it clearly enough for you. Man, I got a lot of things going on here on TradingView. All right, so let me go back here. Thank you again, everyone. All right, so let me go back. Let me go back to this TradingView chat here. Trying to get through all these. Okay, I answered one. Okay, I answered Tesla. Okay, Seoul USDT from Hong Kong. Man, I got people from all over the world here. It's amazing. Hong Kong. Okay, S-O-L USDT. 
Oh man, this is a nice one. Breakout. So this is, look, this is what I mean about a coin doing its own thing, right? Bitcoin hasn't broke out and this thing is leading the way. I like to see that, right? That's a nice sign of strength in general. Broke out of that consolidation. That's, that consolidation right there is typically a trend continuation pattern. And like we looked at some coins earlier, they're starting to get into these. So, okay. Um, this is why I prefer buying near the range lows if I have that opportunity. All right, now, for, all right, so let's talk about this one, SOL against Tether. So it's breaking out, right? The breakout is in process, and it looks like it's, it's on its way there. This is a risky place to buy now. If you're in it, I would let it run. Let this thing do its job until you get a sell signal if you're in it. If you're not in it, well, if you want to go for the breakout, okay, but here's the risk that you take. So you're in a failure, potential failure area. The previous high was 1820, and right now you're at 1878. If this thing gives you a red candle over the next day or so, you may pull back right into the middle of the range, right? And you'd have a failed breakout. That's why I don't like taking those type of trades myself. I'd rather wait for that pull back into the range and then try to buy it. So no, and you may say, but it's in the middle of the range. Why would you just told us not to do that? Well, if it breaks out first and then it tests the previous high of the range, which should now be acting as a support, and it just goes a little lower, which would then be the middle of the range, in that scenario, I'd be open to it. Why? Because we broke out first, and now we're pulling back, we're shaking out all those people, and now buyers are likely to return. That's what I want to see if I'm going to buy a breakout, or that's a more conservative way to play. Now, doesn't mean it'll do it. This thing may keep going. The thing is, I don't like the risk of buying at these prices. So you have to decide. Maybe you're more aggressive and you're like, well, I'll play that game. Okay. But that the risk you face is this thing going back into the middle of the range, which is around uh, 14 15 $14.15 in that area. And you have to be willing to take that risk. Also, since we don't have any price history on this thing, don't know how far it can go, right? Is this thing going to double from here? I mean, I could do some projections. I'm not going to do them right now. But, um, you know, projections will at least give me some potential inflection points. When there's no projections on the chart, one thing you could look at are whole numbers. $20 would be your next whole number. So that would be one inflection point to consider in terms of measuring reward and risk. And you're basically at 1876 right now. So the reward risk, if I have to buy this now to try to get to $20, but I have to risk, you know, that's $2 about or dollar and a half, and I have to risk $4, it's just not worth it for me. Okay, so thank you for bringing that one up. That's how I would treat that one. But very nice general structure, nice breakout. Clearly, it's strong, okay, right now, anyway. Okay, and you don't want to chase these things. All right, so let me, let me, let me get to some of these other ones here. Um, uh, hope you are holding on to some H-bar. Accumulated more at 26. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't have any H-bar. Um, okay, so I'm starting to get to some of these, these, these coin things here. Visionary. And again, thank you for the coins. ARC and CEL. Man, he sent that like an hour ago, 44 minutes ago. Okay, ARC USD. All right, again, so same situation. I got to try to speed this up. Same situation. You're pushing that high. Don't want to buy this thing now. These are good if you're in them, okay? These are places to be locking in profit and distributing risk for those that, you know, think these things are going to just keep going like this. This is where you want to reduce risk, not put on more. So that's what I have to say about the current levels. If you want to buy into this thing, at least wait for a test of an old resistance and use support, which at this point would be around $1.59. So right now you're at $2.35. So if this thing can pull back below $2, maybe into the 1, 160s, 170s, that would be a more attractive spot. Of course, it would have to give you some sort of stability than buying this thing now. If you're in it, like I said, you lock some profit in and then you let it run until it gives you a sell signal of some kind. A sell signal could be a red candle close and then the break of that low. Again, I'm talking about daily charts. Don't confuse this stuff like on 30 minute charts. They're not going to help you very much for these type of trades. Okay, so that was ARC, uh, C-E-L-R-U-S-D, C-E-L-R-U-S-D. Okay, let's take a look at that one. That's Seller Network. Man, these things are going berserk. This is, I have to tell you, seeing chart after chart that looks like this, when they go vertical like this, right? Everyone's piling into these things. Um, that's a sign of the herd mentality. 
okay? So when they look like this and the whole world is in and you have this sign of froth where all this money is just chasing these, these coins that, you know, I don't know. It's like the dot coms. You have to be careful. Anyway, let's talk about this. So you have a potential double top situation, right? Uh, even though this made the higher high, this is still a general area, all right? And all I'm interested in is in the general area. So I would look at that as a potential double top. Uh, you have a red candle close, right? It's almost a pin bar, not exactly, because you have a lower uh, candle wick there. Um, you have an inside bar developing now. So if you haven't taken profit, you, this is a situation where, like, this is where you definitely want to lock something in for sure, okay? Uh, as far as letting it ride, you do have a sell signal now. So I would hold off if you're not in it and see how far this thing can pull back. Right now, your supports are at around $0.08, cents, around there. If it takes that out, um, which is, again, that's a minor support, you're looking at this old resistance right here at about just over 6 maybe about $0.07, cents, right around this area here. right? That's what you're looking at. So I would hold off for something like that. Remember, a lot of times after these things have their run, they go into consolidations, as we've seen with many of these. Like, for example, Link. Look at Link. This is a trade we sent out uh, a few weeks ago. And, I mean, look at, the, look at this consolidation. Will this eventually break out? Well, that's a trend continuation pattern. Hasn't broken out yet. But this thing stopped us out, actually. Okay? Uh, and it tested that range low again. So that's just an example. A lot of times, when they, when they look amazing and they look like this, and they're going to go higher forever, a lot of times, this is what's next, okay? So just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind with these, these nutty stocks and these nutty coins that are doing these nutty things right now. Just something to keep in mind. It's better not to buy highs, okay? And occasionally, the market will reward you for buying a high. You buy it, it goes high. Oh, it was easy. But that habit is a bad habit, and it will come back to bite you in the future when you do it and you get caught in a false breakout you'll say all right it'll, it'll come back it comes back it comes back and it won't come back so just something to keep in mind not a good habit okay so thank you for bringing those two up let me see what else we got zec they say it will hit 1500 usd before oh interesting do i believe this definitely not okay any if, if they say it i don't believe it i'm a contrarian um why don't i believe that because it's a lot of hype there's a lot of hype out there Let's look at the chart. Now, the chart, what, what price is this thing right now? It's $149, okay, ZEC. Um, isn't this thing on Coinbase? Let's see here. Uh, is there a USDT version? All right, let's take a look at Binance. Right, they're all pretty much going to be the same. Um, so here's the thing. So we had that consolidation, right? Trend bullish. We have a consolidation trying to break out right now. I would not want to buy the range high. That's for sure. Whether it's a swing trade, even a position trade. Why buy the range high? Now, he says that they are saying that this thing is going to go to 1500 by August. I don't know who's saying that. But again, if it's public information, chances are it's um, unreliable. So the chart, again, will not tell us that it's going to go to 1500 The chart will tell us how to measure risk. Okay, that's where really charts what are, are, are great for that. And your risk right now, buying this right now, you run the risk of buying right into this resistance. I wonder when they said that. I wonder if they said it like, you know, today or, or, or yesterday. Now, so risk is not favorable here or up here where all the people are going to be piling in thinking, oh, it's going to make a higher high. This is where risk of failure is the greatest. You want to buy a support. Okay, right now your supports are here. So you're looking at uh, 129, 130-ish, and you're fooling around at 149 right now. So if you're going to take a chance on this one, at least wait for the 130s or 120s, if anything. And wait, also, you can't just step in at that price. If you want to start averaging in for bigger picture, okay, small bite. But if you're trying to take a swing trade, you need some sort of confirmation. Again, a level is not enough. I say that a lot. People just want a level. That's good enough. I jump in. Not enough, because it can clear the level. Levels can be random, right? But if we have at least confirmation at a level, that's less random. That's what we want to see. So I wouldn't touch it at this level. I'd wait for that pullback or some kind of pullback. Definitely, you're just, you're just not at an attractive level. What if it breaks out and just keeps going? Well, then you miss it. Or you want to take a small bite and hope that goes on. 
then you can compensate for that risk with a small bite. I mean, I don't want to discourage people from, from getting into these things, um, if, especially if you really like them, but I just do want to warn you of, of the kind of risk that you're taking, okay? That's probably a, a more value anyway to you. Okay, uh, sir, can you explain why Bitcoin can, but altcoins keep, grow, keep growing? That's a good question, all right? So, well, Bitcoin, look, they're doing their, some of these things are doing their own things, okay? So hold on. Um, Bitcoin obviously is is being treated differently than a lot of these altcoins. Altcoins have some kind of great idea that they're some kind of problem that they're solving. Bitcoin is a mature currency that a lot of uh, institutions have been investing into, right? A lot of these altcoins, not really. So the altcoins are a highly speculative space. They're like penny stocks, and there's all these all this grand talk and all this great potential just like the dot coms 20 years ago i was actively trading back then also so i saw it all um and they so if the altcoins you see all this froth developing it's just froth so that's that's how i see that so we compare bitcoin to something like you know some of these other coins that that people have just brought up like um i mean what were some of those coins we looked at here like like was it arc I mean, come on with this, right? It's ridiculous. So this is this is froth. Do these coins really have that much value? Are some of these NFT related coins? I mean, maybe they are, or, or they're those, you know, whatever. They're just the flavor of the moment, right? So keep that in mind, please, when, when you're going into these things. And with YouTube and some of these other social networks out there, they amplify the herd mentality, right? They amplify, they tell everyone, oh, these things, you're gonna miss out, blah, blah, blah. So they amplify it further, just like news would amplify stuff 20 years ago, right? We didn't have Twitter, we didn't have Facebook, we didn't have YouTube, we didn't have any of those things to go to. All we had was the news on the TV, right? The, the financial news, and they would amplify stuff, but it was nowhere near as exaggerated as this. So you have to keep that in mind with these penny, these penny coins, as we'll call them, these altcoins. Okay, so hopefully that answers that question. I know I'm running out of time here. Let me see how I'm doing. Okay, oh man, yeah, I talk a lot and I still have so many questions to answer. I'm probably not gonna be able to answer them all. So I'm gonna try to get through all these, the people that asked all these, these coin, these, these questions and they donated some coins. I, I'm gonna try to get to those because I appreciate your, your effort. Let me just go through some more of these other questions. And then um, again, if I missed your question, I apologize sincerely. Please come back to my next stream. And I stream a couple times a week, just not on TradingView. So, um, you know, please ask again if you can. Okay, Karthik, BNB, uh, ADA. All right, so those are popular. Binance Coin, BNB, USDT. Let's take a look. Okay, so a uh, perfect example of a uh, consolidation, right? Or poten potential trend continuation pattern. I like the consolidation and I like the previous trend, okay? Those are signs of strength, can't argue with those. But current price action, middle of range, I don't like that. I don't wanna take risk here, especially as a swing trade. This thing's an expensive coin, 273. I, I, I'm not buying this here, I wouldn't buy it. So you're, you're going right into that range high, taking a lot of risk there, right? I'd prefer to see another test of the range low. Remember, these things are consolidating. So we don't know when they're going to break out, right? They're going to break out at some random point, maybe based on some news or whatever. But we don't know if this is going to continue now for that breakout. So if anything, I want to get into a price that's more advantageous for me, okay? Not the people that bought at those great prices. And now they're going to unload on me now, which is what they should be doing. So I want it here, okay? And since you're in a range and you're not exactly trending, there's a chance that you can revisit a better price. That's what I'd be interested in. That's around, what is the low here, 224? So you're looking around those low 220s. That's a point of interest. And then of course you wanna see some sort of supportive price action at that point. But that's where I'd like to take risk from, not here. Okay, so that's Binance Coin. Thank you for asking about that. Let me see what else we got here. Um, ADA, so Cardano, right? A lot of this, talk about hype. I mean, this is like the king of, of altcoin hype. Um, this is the one where I saw on, on the video where they were saying, look at all these events that, you know, that they're going to they're gonna be doing this. And, and they recently got onto Coinbase. They, they got one of their events, you know, one of these events. They, 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 they uh, achieved their blah, blah, blah. Okay, yeah, that's nice. Um, let me know in advance 
before they get listed on Coinbase, okay? Tell me the date and all that stuff so I could buy it before everyone else. That's what I wanna know, not after the fact. Anyway, so here's Binance, I'm sorry, Cardano. You're in the middle, right here, middle of range, no good, okay? So that, that does not fit the criteria. I would, if I'm not in it, I wouldn't wanna be in it. If you're in it, at this point, again, you're inside this range. If you're in Cardano, I know a lot of people are, I would give it the chance to break out and see if it can. If it can't, at least you have an opportunity to potentially sell here near the range high. I'd be looking for failure up in there to unload more coins. Because again, a lot of these are just speculative froth, okay? And when, when they're out of favor, and you know, we, like we saw them for two years, and a lot of these coins were garbage for two years. And we'll see a period like that again. When we see that, you don't wanna be caught in these things, right? So I would be looking to reduce risk up in the area. Unless it breaks out, you wanna give it a chance. Again, assuming you're in it um, now. If you're not in it, I would wait for range low, okay? Test of range low. Don't know if we'll get that opportunity again, but you want somewhere near the range low, which is around $1.05, that area. And it would help if you can wait for some sort of confirmation. What if it tests the range low and breaks lower? What if Bitcoin has that pullback to 40K or 45K that no one's really expecting? What if we get it? Right? Anything is possible. You always have to keep an open mind. Some news comes out of nowhere that no one was expecting. And next thing you know, just like this, right? You know, I talk about this a lot. Um, where were these YouTube guys, right? There's all these videos right now on YouTube, you know, promoting this, promoting that. Where were these guys back in July of 2020? I talk about this a lot. Why didn't they tell me Cardano was going here back then? Well, where were those videos? They weren't there, right? So that's the thing about these. I want to know where these things are going to be in six months. Sure, they're going to say it's going to be three times as much because of blah, blah, blah. But I don't believe these people. Most of them are not even qualified to talk about these, uh, especially in terms of risk. So I wouldn't go by any of that stuff. My point is this. We touched the range low. Okay, that's a point of interest. At least risk is a little more, it's more advantageous. Um, probability is more favorable at those levels. If it breaks that support, and Bitcoin happens to be breaking, I would step aside, okay? I wouldn't be looking to put on more and more because we get that broad pullback, this, this thing, these things are gonna get ugly. That's typically what happens after a lot of speculative froth, which is what we're in now. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see a correlated stock market going with it, okay? Um, so thanks for asking. All right, Caleb, hey, good to see you. All right, cool. Uh, Arno, all right, all right. So, all right, Avi, KSM, USDT, all right, KSM. USDT, I'm gonna do a few more of these and I, oh my God, look at this. KSM against Tether. This is what I mean. What do you do with this? Buying this now, you're chasing. This is pure herd mentality, okay, pure. You wanna see herd mentality? Here it is, KSM, all right? I don't know what their story is, but you can't touch this now. If you're in it, great time to take profits, unload. You don't have to take it all, but you wanna reduce risk here you want to distribute risk, not put on more. I mean, this thing is up $32 today. That's a $543 coin. Okay, so I would hold off on any new purchases until it pulls back. Now, that's a decent price. So pullbacks, you know, a swing trading, something like this would, would be more um, my style. I, you know, I like things that could move like this. And your first pullback, you're looking at like something like this over here right? Either there, or I'll tell you the numbers here in a moment, either there or there. So you're looking at like 460 or you're looking at like uh, 400, right? Those are, the, those are the areas I'd be most interested in for a new purchase as far as a swing trade goes. But as of right now, you can't, buying the highs, the risk is so high. So either you're distributing, locking in some profit, and like I said, you let some ride. You have, you know, whatever, 100 coins, whatever, 10 coins, you sell a couple, take that profit, and see where this thing goes, right? You get a red signal, you get a red candle develop, you wanna unload more, at least you can justify it at that point. At this point, you know, you let your winner run. Okay, so I don't know if you're in it, but wow, nice nice chart. This is definitely one for the radar. Thank you for bringing this up. Okay, back to uh, TradingView. Let's take a look at what else I got here. Okay, I'm gonna have to start jumping now to these people that, I've seen all these coin donations. I have to get to these before I wrap this up. So g Manel, uh, g Manel, Neo, Xpev, and EV stocks. All right, so NEO, right? We looked at Tesla, which is gonna be relevant to that. Here's NEO, right? Tesla's biggest competitor. Same situation, potential double bottom. 
price action is a little more favorable, right? We had Friday pin, pin bar, today inside bar. So this thing is trying to find some stability near a potential uh, double bottom. But here's the thing. First of all, you're facing a market, and, and like I said, with the S&P, the S&P is at a high, and if it fails, these things are all at supports. So relatively speaking, I'd expect those supports to break. This is the problem. You have a lot of people buying into these. Oh, it's a support, pull back, great price. Yes, those things are true. But if you don't look at it in light of the S&P, you're not accounting for all the risk. This is risky, okay, with the S&P. And I don't like new longs, especially stocks that are fooling around at previous lows or double bottom lows. Those double bottoms are likely to break. I want to see the S&P at a low. And then I'd have much more confidence, uh, you know, with that, with that type of double bottom on NEO. So no on NEO, okay? NEO is a no. Um, okay, I'm trying to be funny. Anyway, let's see what else we got. XPEV, XPEV. All right, so another one, XPEN, right? Um, same situation. Now, this one, right, trying to develop that higher low. But these stock prices, these stock charts aren't going to be very helpful unless I have the S&P with me, a lot of them. Now, I know these aren't highly correlated, like the, the, a lot of these EV stocks are not highly correlated, but the problem is there's been a lot of negative news and they've been kind of out of favor, right? Take a look at Nikola. What a piece of junk. Look at this thing, fooling around on its lows. I typically like things like this, but in a strong market, and the market is, is, is in an area where it's vulnerable, right? We're not looking at market lows because even though like, it's not highly correlated, I want, I want that strong market behind me, all right? If any, I just want it behind me. It gives me more confidence. So that's what I mean with these EV stocks. I would hold off on them because of the S&P situation. He asked for one more, uh, other EV stocks, right? So like FUV, for example, right? FUV, you could see a recent swing trade. I think this one stopped out. This may have been a trade of the week. We, we send out free trades once a week. So here we go, same situation. Double bottom potential, lousy close today. All right, red candle close, close on its lows, no good, don't like it, relatively weak. Great location, not great situation. Context, not favorable, stay away. That's what I would do with these. If the situation can improve, then these are stocks that are at least in attractive places for longs, okay? They are in attractive places, so I don't wanna lose sight of them. Keep them on the radar for sure. Okay, so thank you for that. Um, Asagal. Sorry, if I, if I don't get your name right, I apologize. Uh, can you take RKT? Okay. Oh, Abhishek. Oh, okay. Hey, Abhishek. No problem. I, know, I, know, I remember you, Abhishek. Okay, RKT. So, all right. Then now, again, this, this, this kind of company obviously is going to be affected by interest rates. Um, I don't know what this is all about over here, but this is, a, this is not a great general structure, right? I don't see a clear cut bullish trend like we looked at some other of these coins and some of these other things. You have bearish pin bar today. Don't I don't like that at all. So if I was going to do anything with this on the long side, I'd be waiting for a test of this range low, if anything. But keep in mind, if, if, if interest rates keep getting more and more unfavorable, I would not expect much out of this. Okay, just something to keep in mind. That's where having some fundamental insight may be helpful because very interest rate sensitive, right? Same with like NFP Friday. NFP can have an effect on interest rates because the Fed typically uses non-farm payrolls as, an, as a gauge, right? That's why people keep make such a big deal out of it. Okay, Faye, someone's, oh, thank you, thank you, Faye. Okay, Net, Netlux, okay, um, so KSM, got it, all right? And then Ian, so Ian, uh, I missed the BTC. Okay, so Ian, yeah, all you have to do is rewind that thing, like I said. And, and okay, so I answered that question. Okay, cool. So I got through those. All right, and again, thank you everyone for those generous donations. I really appreciate that. You don't have to do that. You know, uh, I'm just happy to help and, and give you some insight and perspective and help you see through all and cut through all the noise that's out there because there's a lot of noise. And, you know, I know what it's like to get confused by it all. All right, so let me see what else we got here. Let me see if I get some more of these questions. Uh, Okay, let's see what it has to say. I'm curious, it's coming from a very respected trader. Okay, okay. Uh, he's referring to that one we talked about, the ZEC, uh, respected trader, all right? Um, yes, so, so yeah, Ian, all you have to do is go back. 
Let's see. I'm wondering if I'll get a double bottom at 50K. Well, all right. So that I do believe, look, I see a bunch of those questions on BTC. If you don't go back, I, like I said, I wouldn't touch Bitcoin here. I, resistance area, don't like it. It may break through. I don't want to take the risk. I mean, that, that's basically the summary of what I talked about before. I spent about 10 minutes on it. I want to see the double bottom at 50K. I'd be more confident there if it can deliver that. If it breaks out, it breaks out without me. I mean, we do have a swing trade on, that, you know, one third of it. It's a small position. And hey, we have the luxury of letting the market do its thing, whether it wants to do it or not. That's up to the market. But uh, I wouldn't put on new risk here. Okay, even though we do have the higher low, I do expect a higher high based on that, unless we don't get it because we have this vulnerable area. So it's tricky. We have to let the market show its hand. Okay, let me go back to this other chat here. Man, I'm so behind. All right, I'm going to be wrapping this up here in a, few min in a few minutes. Let me just see if I can get through a few more of these, see if I can answer them quickly. Okay, Rick, I know Rick's been asking this uh, CRO. So let me see if I can get that in there. Hold on, let me just go back. All right, now we had a question about DOT. Cavi asked about DOT. All right, so let me get through a few more of these. DOT was a, a trade of the week we sent out a while back, a few weeks ago. And here's the thing. So nice, here, see the situation on DOT. And this is a nice learning example. Range low, right? Dot went to the range low. We called it before that, right? We called it a much higher price, but it went to the range low. This is what you want to see out of a lot of these coins that are starting to consolidate. Test of range low. Now, right now, dot is at the mid range, right? In the middle. So I don't want to put on more risk here. We can argue there's a higher low and all that stuff. That's nice, but we're still in the middle of the range. So I wouldn't put on any more risk here. It's at 30. $34 right now. I prefer this thing near $30 or the high 20s. So I'd want to see another test if it can deliver that and just avoid the range, the, the mid range. Look, there are plenty of other opportunities out there. So why, why take this 50 50 chance, right? Maybe it goes to this range high, but I'm not willing to take that chance. What if it fails up there? You, you have to be more nimble on these and you have to understand. You know, we have to watch a lot of stuff. I have to watch a lot of stuff, and I can't sit here and babysit these things, right? I can't sit there, okay, I got the middle. Oh, if it goes up here, I'm going to get out. I can't, I just don't have the time to do that. So I'd rather get in at a price that's more probable because I have to manage a lot of things and, you know, and then let it do its job from there. So anyway, that's what I think about that. I'd wait for the pullback. Um, I wouldn't take it here because it's 50-50, all right? If you're more aggressive, you can play that game, especially if you have the time to monitor it. All right, so let me see. That's dot. Okay, AG. Yeah, I like AG photo. Rich. Okay, Rich. Uh, thanks for the tips. How do you determine inflection points? Good question, Rich. Uh, two ways. I look at historical support and resistance, and then I look at projected support and resistance. Projected, projected comes from a projection, like a Fibonacci projection. Um, I'm not going to put that on the chart now, but that's, that's where I get inflection points, or I look at also whole numbers. But if I have a chart with no historical prices on it, you know, there's no price history, uh, I'll typically use projections to get an idea because projections are giving me proportions into the future. And I know that markets tend to trade. Human emotion trend, tends to unfold proportionally. That's why there's any, you know, that's why Fibonacci has any use at all is because we're measuring the proportions of human emotion. All right, so thanks for asking. That's a great question. Okay, um, yeah, so photo guy, V-I-A-C, okay. I got that one. Um, Kazakhstan, nice, wow. We got some really, um, we got people from all over the world here. Some, some countries I haven't heard from in a while. Kazakhstan, I don't think I've heard anyone from Kazakhstan. All right, Z, isn't it pump and dump scheme? Okay, Z, I'm not sure which one you're talking about. Estonia, all right, nice. Welcome, Jorge, uh, where do you set your stop loss when swing trading uptrend channel? Previous swing low? All right, so that's an interesting question. Stop loss is gonna be a function of uh, the proportion. So let's, let's, pull up, let's pull up Bitcoin, right? So in a situation like this, right, I, I would put the stop loss for a swing trade, right, in a bullish trend, Bitcoin is in a bullish trend, if I got into the trade back here, which is where really I, that, that was where the low risk signal was, we didn't call that because I didn't like the setup developing. Um, but if we had taken that, the stop loss would go below that candle, right? But not exactly at 5360. It'd have to go lower because everyone puts their stop at the same price. 
All right, I don't want to be where everyone puts their stops because there's a tendency for them to get tapped out, right? So I'd prefer to put it lower. Yes, it's more risk, but you know what? There's a less chance that the stop is going to be tapped out. We all know how that works. So that's how I would work with something like that for a swing trade. So it's usually a proportion, and sometimes the entry candle is too tight. So in that case, if the entry candle is too tight, then I'll go back to a broader structure, which obviously will, will, will call for more risk. And you have to compensate that with smaller size, compensate for that. Okay, so thanks for asking, great question. All right, so Rick, he's been asking this question. I have to go over CRO because the guy's been asking for like two days. All right, so here's CRO. Um, so here's a situation, right? Nice bullish situation, generally. You have a range high over here. You have a higher low developing, right? This is a little mini consolidation. I do like that. And today's candle, which is a nice strong candle, is trying to break higher and it's coming off of the higher low. For, for, for a swing trade, this thing's at 21 cents right now. And the low is 19.30, around there. So for a swing trade in this situation, that's where you're defining your risk from. If you're interested in the swing trade, at least you have some structure to work with there compared to some of the other things we looked at. You're going for this high, all right, uh, 24.76 area. You need to clear that high. If it struggles, that's where you have to make a decision if it can't break that high. So the question is, what's the reward risk? Well, if you're buying this thing at 21 cents, you're risking about two or three cents and you're trying to make uh, four to five, maybe a little bit more, the reward risk is worthwhile in that situation. It's, a very, it's like a very micro um, example, but it's, it's worthwhile in that sense. And if it fails, it can't make that higher high, that's again where you have to do something, either lighten up your position, uh, get out, something, especially if it's a swing trade, because it should make the higher high, theoretically speaking, if this trend is gonna stay intact. Keep in mind, a lot of these coins are going into consolidations. This may go into one. So we don't know yet. It needs to fail at the high in order to get be a better clue. All right, so one more, and then I'm going to have to wrap this up. Again, I apologize if I didn't get to your question. I've been at this an hour and 30 minutes, so I got, I got to stop talking. Um, alts are nothing rather than pump and dump. Oh, Shay Shank says. All right. Well, yeah, so I have to agree with Shay Shank to a point there. A lot of them, they're like penny stocks. Penny stocks are a penny stock for a reason. They're garbage, right? So a lot of these altcoins, while they have a lot of compelling ideas, I've watched a bunch of videos, and they're all going to solve these great problems and do these amazing things, right? The dot-coms had the same story 20 years ago, all right? And, and most of them you don't even know about today. There's only a few of them that we know about. Um, the rest of them, right, they're, they're no longer stocks. So you have to keep that in mind with these. Always keep that in the back of your mind. You don't want to get big or too big. A lot of them, the best way to play them, in my opinion, is they're like lottery tickets. Some are going to go. Some of them have a future. A lot of them don't. Which ones are going to go? There's no way to know. If you're an insider, maybe you believe in the technology and you're willing to put more at risk because maybe you're a developer for the coin or, you know, whatever. You have inside information. But if you don't and you're an outsider, they're like lottery tickets. So you throw a little money at the ones you like and you hope for a really big move. Right. And that's the best really you can do. So if you throw, you know, a couple of hundred dollars into one and you get 10 times your return because it went nuts, you take your money and that's your home run. Are you going to turn a thousand dollars into 50,000? Probably not. So I, I wouldn't get over exaggerated with those dreams. Although on YouTube, there's a lot of people selling those dreams. OK, so just something to keep in mind. A lot of people don't like the stuff that I say because it's very realistic. But if you want to make money in this in the long run, you have to be realistic. The people that don't make money are the ones that have these very warped expectations. And I can understand why, especially if you have no experience. But you have to have, you know, you have to be able to see through that noise. And the more time you spend with it, the more you'll start to recognize. OK, um, OK, so let me let me start wrapping this up here. Um, let me see what I got here. All right. Hold on, um, man. All right. Ethereum, uh, RKT. Okay, I looked at that. Uh, okay, I summarized BTC. We looked at ADA. All right, R Iran. Wow, that's um, wow. Lithuania. I love to see these country names. I love to see these different countries. It's amazing. Someone's watching me in Lithuania. Nice, nice. Never been there. 
Um, okay, in Iran, that's, that's, that, that's a, never been there either. All right, let me see what else. Okay, so I answered those. I'm just running through the chat real quick. Cardano gets delayed every step of the way. By the time it'll be far outranked, right. I, that's why I don't, again, most of these coins are, are, you know, like I said, they're like penny stocks. Okay, EGLD USD. All right, here's what I'll do. I'm going to run through EGLD USD, and then I'm going to run through another one over here. Let me see what I got here. Chills, right? And Powell's asking for RVP. All right, I can't let, I got to, Powell's been here. Powell's been following me for a long time. I, I got to answer it. All right. So let me do these. All right. So first one, EGLD, EGLD. Hold on. Oh, Faye. Hey, thank you, Faye. Again, you don't have to keep doing that. It's like the third one. I uh, appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. EG, EGLD, USD. All right. I've seen this one. Again, perfect example, perfect example of a consolidation after a crazy run. All right. I wouldn't do anything with this here. Wait for the support. This is the crazy run. Notice the crazy run. Look at, notice that, right? That's what a lot of these coins are showing right now, the crazy run. Thank you again, Faye. Um, the crazy run, and people think it's just going to continue, and then you get this. A lot of these coins are going to do that. So just be, just be cognizant of that and see if you can find the range low or wait for the range low. That's what I would do with these. So that's what I'd say about EGLD. Let me just answer... Um, RVP, well, so, you know, Chillis is, is what, is that CHZ? Um, no, let me see, Chill is, Chill is, oh, sorry, oh, it is CHZ, all right, CHZ, USDT, um, consolidating, right, you're in the consolidation, wait for the range low, that's all, I wouldn't chase, don't start chasing these things, let it see if it could test that range low again, better probability there, okay, I'm just wrapping this up, I'm trying to get a little faster here, um, POW, RVP, let's take a look real quick, retractable technologies. All right, so nice candle close today. You are coming off of this double bottom support, but the thing is, again, I don't know what the correlation is with the S&P. You're sort of buying into the middle of that range, and you're facing a resistance right up in here, right, right up in this area. So I don't like that. I don't like that. Um, I don't like the location. Uh, can I get a horizontal line? Yeah, right there. So you're, you're facing that resistance around 14, and this thing is fooling around 1251. I, I think you could do better. You know, I think if you can get a test of that range low again, or just find a better, a better chart. Because, you know, again, the S&P and all those, we saw that they're at their highs. These things are trying. If these things break their supports, I mean, you have head and shoulder patterns all over the place here. If they break their supports, you're going to see a pullback all over the place. And there's no reason to get overexposed. Right, so I would, I would be very careful with that. Okay, and Anna, Anna, I have to answer Anna's question, and then I'm done. Okay, again, and I appreciate everyone's questions. PLTK, let's see, Anna, what is that? Looking very extreme, maybe worth, okay. And Anna's a very aggressive trader. Um, PLTK, ooh, okay, Platika Holdings, this thing's called. All right, yeah, Anna, definitely extreme. So here's a situation, I would call this hated, okay. Um, Gave back a lot there. There's no bullish trend, that's for sure. Don't have much price history, but I see why Anna likes it because it's got the tweezer bottom right there, okay? So you have a potential bounce situation. This is very aggressive. Anna's right. It's aggressive. So if you're going to play something like this off the tweezer, I like the tweezer bottom, right? So it's basically like a little mini double bottom. You have two pin bars, and it took out the pin bar high. You'd be looking for at least some sort of bounce attempt, but your potential is going to be measured by this level right here, this level, which is what? A uh, low of 28.58, that area. And you're fooling around right now at 25. So you're looking at maybe three points, two to three points, you know, of profit potential. What are you risking for that? You know, a dollar, right? So that's what you have to keep in mind. With this momentum, you are fighting this bearish momentum. So if you get involved in something like this as an aggressive swing trade and it takes out that pin bar low, I'd be out of it. 24 and a half, 24 and a quarter, breaks 24 even, I'd be out of it. I wouldn't give it more of a chance. This thing can easily go lower based on this bearish momentum. So it doesn't mean you can't take counter trend trades. You need to understand the risk and you need to be very nimble as to especially and be in tune with what can go wrong. But a lot of mistakes that people make is they take the right trade idea, but they don't consider an adverse scenario and then what to do. So they go into hope mode. Oh, it'll come back. I hope it comes back. It'll come back. It's a stock. It'll come back. 
right? And next thing you know, it goes to $10, right? And your investment gets cut in half. And now you went from a swing trade or a day trade to now you're an investor. You don't want to do that, right? You don't want to make that mistake. So that's why you have to be very strict with these, especially these counter trend. They can pay off well when they work, but as you know, you know, some of the counter trend trades we've taken, when they don't work, you need to be out. Okay, so thank you for asking that question. Again, I got to wrap this up now. I've talked way more than I should have. I appreciate everyone's great questions. Um, I'm sorry if I didn't get to your question. I sincerely apologize because I do want to try to answer everyone's questions. I do try to make that effort. Um, again, come, come to another stream. I'm trying to stream on TradingView every Monday. And of course, all of you regulars know my other places. Okay, so again, thank you very, very much for your participation, for joining me today, and for asking such great questions. I hope you got some insight and some, some value out of this. Um, you can press, press the like button or, you know, whatever. To, it's great. For, I've been getting a lot of great feedback from the TradingView community, so I appreciate all that. Thank you so much. Okay, so I will see you all next time. I hope you have a great day, and thank you very much for watching.